Okay, you get to listen to me for a little bit uh, longer. Um, and uh, this is a different, a different topic, um, but it's certainly something that comes into play with any technology development uh, these days. So I want to I want to talk about data in mining and what we what we do with it today and what we can do with it and the value that we can get out of it. So this uh, um, now of course we've got the the Syncrude branded red um, on this presentation, but this is a project that was uh, made possible through the interactions at CMIC um, and the connections that were made between uh, Syncrude. Uh, Queen's University and the advanced uh, computing um, uh, sort of department that they have uh, there. So I'm going to come back to the map again. This is another element on the map, right? This is something that we had determined is very important. And again, actually, this one came out during the latest workshop that we had as one of the most important um, elements of this, uh, this map and one of the initial focuses that we want to have. And this is improving predictive analytics of equipment and mining process performance. So this is a very specific project, uh, it's a small scale project that I want to talk about, um, but I'm going to provide a little bit of context uh, to begin with. So this is a project that is uh, focused uh, uh, at Syncrude right now, so I want to give you a little bit of history on, on Syncrude, and I literally have two slides. So um, we move about a million tons a day, so a lot of materials moved every day. We used to do it with drag lines and bucket wheels. We had uh, four of each of these in our first uh, base mine, we called it, which is now closed and we've moved on to some other, other mines. So we moved to the truck and shovel operation um, mid-90s, and this is actually right about the time that I started working uh, for the company, and it's evolved uh, significantly uh, since then. And uh, for any surface miners in here, um, uh, a cool stat is that uh, BE 395B, we had three of them. We were able to run those um, over 120,000 hours. There's no other piece of uh, gear in the world that has been able to achieve that. So um, right now we operate 130 ultra-class haul trucks. Um, this 400-ton haul trucks, uh, Komatsu, uh, Cat, and Liber trucks. So we have a mixed fleet, 20 large face shovels, and 300-plus uh, mobile support equipment. And just uh, you can imagine what it costs to operate and maintain this equipment, but it is north of a billion dollars a year. So, the focus here, and I'm going to get to the data part of it, um, is on haul truck uh, maintenance strategies. So, maintenance costs have increased, and these are common themes across the entire industry, so not just in the oil sands, but across uh, all of the hard rock mining as well, worldwide. Maintenance costs have increased. Um, it's labor, consumables, components, maintenance plans um, in, in our industry have been quite stagnant. Very conservative, um, calendar-based scheduling. For haul trucks, for us, it's a 21-day cycle, regardless of utilization, equipment, uh, duty, and component condition. And then, of course, with a large fleet like the one we have, um, and a mixed fleet, it's uh, lots of scheduling challenges. So there's certainly some complexity to managing our maintenance programs. Um, along with this, operating costs have increased, labor, fuel, environmental consideration, um, and capital costs have increased uh, as well. Trucks just, just cost more. So that's the, that's the scene set. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to... Um, we want to improve our, our maintenance. We want to reduce our, our costs. So a bit of a, a, bit of a background um, uh, on you know, getting closer to the, to the data side of this. Um, so maintenance in intervals are calendar-based, like I said. Um, and our focus here is on oil changes and oil sampling. So as I kind of talk forward, think about your, um, your own vehicle and the fact that you change, well, hopefully you change the oil every once in a while in it. But um, it's very clear within um, you know, your maintenance manual and requirements for your warranty and from the manufacturer that you need to change your oil every 8,000 or 20,000 kilometers. And if you don't, then there could be some consequences from that. But it has nothing to do with how you drive your vehicle, um, uh, where you drive your vehicle, and uh, those types of, of uh, items. 
So the objective here is to optimize oil change frequency, understand the lubricant degradation, validate component benchmarks, um, and uh, can we use this data to improve our conditioning monitoring program. So um, some of you may think that, oh yeah, we do this already. Um, I'd like someone to actually show me exactly how that is done. We have tons of data and we have had tons of data in our industry on our equipment for a long time. And it's useful data, um, but this has taken it to the next level. Um, this is truly taking this massive, and big data is one of these uh, words or phrases that we hear a lot of, analyzing it in the right way and turning it into information so that we can actually make some, some decisions on it. So the scope here really is to provide some data uh, to Queen's University. Uh, they have an advanced uh, computing center. Um, and this is mixed data. So it's coming from an oil sample analysis system. It's coming from our uh, scheduling system. It's coming from data that's collected on our, our vehicles. And it's not only uh, a number, but it's a number and a time. So there's a temporal uh, component to this. And it's about identifying what's important, building a model, and determining the optimum maintenance program. So what the true opportunity for us is, and we believe there's a 10% reduction in the amount of time equipment is in for servicing, increasing availability by a half to 1%, which is a, in, in our fleet, that's a whole new truck, right? We can eliminate a truck from our, our fleet and avoid any major failures. And here's some pictures of, of, uh, of some failures. Uh, my, my project lead who's, who's working on this uh, is, actually, is actually a mechanic. Um, and he has great pictures of things that are broken in the field. So this was a very expensive failure, over a million dollars. So identify indicators um, in oil analysis. Um, we provided data on six haul trucks, identify trends on the engine oil frequency, identify failure modes, understand lubrication, life degradation, optimize uh, the program to maximize the equipment, and change the current fixed timing um, to uh, an automated scheduling system. So the method, so and, and, and I'm not gonna talk in detail about the method because that's not my area of expertise, but um, so it's to use data analytics, follow the data analytics process, uh, determine predictive models, it has a learning algorithm, and uh, do time series forecasting. Again, this really broken down is taking all this data that we have available using the right analysis tools, in this case, advanced data analytics, um, turn it into information so that we can make decisions. And this is the process. I mean, really, there's a couple components to it. It's understanding the business. It's understanding the data, preparing the data to be analyzed, um, having a well-defined model, um, and then evaluating the performance of this model and, and deploying. And there's a feedback loop, of course, in this. This is one of the examples of the models that Queens is using to help, uh, help develop the, the, the model for our particular case of, of maintenance uh, on the haul trucks. And there's a learning algorithm part of this and it gets better with the more data that you provide. And this is an example of some of the output. And I'm certainly not going to talk about this in detail, but I want you to appreciate that we probably have um, 50 charts like this with multiple dimensions to them. And it is very difficult for us as humans to look at it and pull any information out of it that, uh, that we can actually use. So the intent here is to take all this what and when data and figure out what is most important um, and, uh, and then focus in on that. So the analysis, it's, it's uh, a confidence model. It's starting to take form. Um, influence is, is, is calculated on as a, as a correlation of each, uh, of each piece of data um, and we're looking for causality, of course, for sure. And then we want to determine what's the most important data and, and focus in on that. We don't have to measure everything. We just have to measure what is uh, going to provide us the information that we're looking for. Um, at this point in time, data problems have been highlighted and we're continuing to improve, improve the model. So early results indicate that um, 
uh, the majority of the powertrain components were being underserviced, and the majority of the engines were being overserviced. So um, certainly there's more to do to figure out how that fits into the maintenance um, program, but there's an opportunity there that we thought was there and has been confirmed. We're looking at um, you know, whether or not we need a different set of data to determine the engine oil, and you can appreciate the amount of engine oil that we use in our fleet of equipment as well, so this is, this is very important um, as well. So engine oil, uh, not enough data yet to do that. So next steps, data cleansing and fixing the ano anomalies in the model, increase the data set, so more units, improve the statistical model predictability, generate new features and more influence on the decision to change oil and build a time series forecasting for, uh, for the changes. So again, we're well on the way to turning all this data into information that we can actually use. And um, you know, ultimately the path forward here, of course, is, is the results from the small scale uh, pilot are gonna be shared with the CMIC uh, surface mining working group. So everybody part of that working group is gonna get um, the, the full report. And um, then we're going to expand into uh, more of a demonstration pilot. So how do we actually integrate this into our business? Um, we want to bring more equipment, more data in, into the model and start to uh, use this uh, information, the output from the model, in, in our maintenance uh, programs. So certainly this is going to be uh, open up to all the CMIC members. And then ultimately we need to uh, uh, plan for commercialization. So this is the engagement of the appropriate vendors to take the output um, from this work and integrate that into uh, more commercially available uh, robust packages for managing uh, maintenance and, and our operations. And you know, just, just uh, you know, many of us have um, digital strategies internally within our, uh, within our companies. Uh, this fits um, clearly into one of our, um, there we go, finally I pressed the button. Uh -huh. This fits uh, clearly into one of our elements within our digital strategy as well, which is using advanced analytics and root cause analysis for world-class maintenance and reliability management. So again, this was a collaborative effort between um, Syncrude and, and Queens, and Queens does not know um, haul trucks. They were able to take this data that we provided them, analyze this in um, an unbiased way and actually come up with uh, a model that is going to be of great value to us moving forward. So uh, great capability coming from this organization and certainly looking to expand this, this program. So thank you very much. I would argue is your, how you operate the trucks. Absolutely. And so, are, since you're able to do all this analytics on this data, are you not are you not putting in and taking the opportunity to put in the operating data against these trucks? Because some trucks are going to be operated like, like my son drives his car a little bit differently than I do, right? And, and yeah, if my wife drives my car a little bit differently than I do. Too, yeah, right? yeah, no, no, absolutely. And we certainly uh, uh, discussed that. I think for the first uh, phase here, we wanted to just keep it focused on you know, what's the condition of the oil, what's the condition of the, the components in the engine, and gather that data. And we hadn't even gone there yet, but you're absolutely right, like the, the service of duty um, on the equipment, the amount of fuel burn, for example, right? Uh, um, these are very important uh, variables that can have an impact as well. So, but, but that's where we want to go. You know, we want to connect, you know, the operation uh, to, to the equipment as well, and, and somehow figure out how to encourage operators to operate the equipment in the best way possible. Right. So you, you, know, you can easily imagine how this type of analysis can, can expand within your, within your operation. But the reality is we have so much data right now. That data is available, right? Um, you know, it's, it's collected on the cat trucks and, and in fact we have a wireless system to collect it. So we have terabytes of data, right? And we do observe these uh, um, you know these parameters on 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 panel displays in our uh, operating rooms and things like that as well. It's just we're overwhelmed with the amount of data that we have now. How do you turn that into information? And I and I'm not comfortable with a black box. I want to know what the model is 
and we need to be comfortable with what the model is and what it does um, before we go out and, and work with someone and, and develop this, the, the software to, to do it. And that's what Queen's is doing for us. We have time for one more question. Yeah. So. I have a question I want to ask you. I assume your purpose of this data analytics is to optimize the life of the oil, right? You know, as for my car, you're talking about the car. Now there are smart sensors. Smart yes. sensors that can tell you time to change your oil. Can you install the smart sensor for each of the truck that keep track of the data? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Those sensors exist, uh, okay. and uh, in fact, some of them are already installed in our equipment. The the, the challenge is now, um, you know, when the oil light comes on and says the oil's no good, if there's no room in your maintenance bay um, for the truck, or you need a certain number of trucks to uh, you know operate that day, it becomes uh, sort of a, a mute point. So you need to to figure out the the scheduling aspect of this as well. Right, so, um, and it's still, you know, the, the sensors, uh, the online sensors, uh, there's still lots of work to do to develop those as well. And in fact, going back to the roadmap, that's one of the key items that we identified is uh, uh, sensors, in particular, uh, sensors related to understanding what the ore is, but this is another um, opportunity as well, right, within our, our equipment. <coughs>